Today, we're going to be playing The Sandbox. For those of you who don't know, The Sandbox is a real cash economy, NFT, and cryptocurrency-based game, or metaverse, if you will. The way that The Sandbox works is you've got a base currency called a sand. Sand is a cryptocurrency that can be exchanged for real cash. You might have to go to Ethereum or Bitcoin, but you can get it to real cash eventually if you want to. In the sandbox, the world that you create, the land that you build on is all player owned. The land is in the form of an NFT. And if you own that NFT, you can upload a scene to that land and then everybody can go through that scene, play it, and maybe you earn money through it or maybe it's just a home for you and your friends to hang out in. Your land is populated by NFTs and the NFTs in the sandbox can be used to do everything from put monsters on your land, create a house on your land, or just decorate your character. So you can buy NFTs that put shoes on your character or a shirt on your character, or you can buy an NFT that creates a dragon that flies over your plot of land. If you watched one of my earlier videos about the sandbox, this was about 10 months ago. I don't do videos on cryptocurrency too often, but when I, when I do, they're usually bangers, right? But if you watched that video 10 months ago, and even though it was for entertainment purposes only, and this video is for entertainment purposes only, you took an interest in the sandbox and you decided maybe you wanted to buy some sand. Back then it was about 25 cents for sand. It was a fairly easy world to get into. A land plot was $1,000. And while that is expensive, prices have gone up by quite a bit. Right now, sand is worth $5 a sand. So I don't, I don't know what percentage that is that you would have made on your money, but that, that would be pretty good. Uh, the NFTs are priced in sand. So all those prices went up as well. And land that was, you know, thousands of dollars is now hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars. But hey, you can live next to Snoop Dogg. Anyways, that's what we're looking at today. We're looking at the sandbox. We're going to dive into it. We're going to see if this game's worth it. We're going to talk about what we're seeing. And keep in mind, this is the alpha. It's going to be going down in about two days from now, from when I'm filming this. This video is going to be coming out probably in late December, early January, depending on my upload schedule. But hopefully it's entertaining for everybody. And again, entertainment purposes only. So let's just go play the alpha. And you can see here, I don't have an alpha pass, so I did contact the sandbox about getting access to some of these locked areas. I pointed to other videos I've done, and I tried to put my best foot forward, but I just think that, think the ball was just dropped between us. So I've only got access to three land areas. That's also why this video is coming out so late. I was hoping, just hoping something would come through, but it, it didn't happen. So we're just going to be playing through these. And first things first, let's uh, figure out how to create a character. So you can create, this is the game, and I don't think that's what we want to do. Here we go, select your avatar. So let's go through and select your avatar. I haven't really purchased anything, so this is all your just free-to-play options. So you can see here, it looks like you can pick a pretty generic avatar if you wanted to, or you can go in and customize everything. And if you folks know me, you know I'm going to try and customize everything. So it looks like we've got a lot of options here. But all these heads are pre-created. I would have liked something that would allow me to craft the hair and everything like that. But let's just see. Let's see if there's something that fits me. So we've, we've got to go with the mohawk. If you guys don't know, this is, um, you know, well, a lot of my characters have mohawks. So we're just, we're just going to go with that. For the skin tone, let's, let's do, no, let's do slight. All right, we'll just do it like that, whatever. Custom colors. So I can't do custom colors yet. Can we do colors on the hair? It looks like you can't. So you probably have to pay for that. Um, you probably have to pay for new hairstyles. For the t-shirt, I think we're going to have to go with the skull t-shirt. This guy's going to be a little bit of a punk here. You could go Hawaiian if you want, or you could go with a Halloween hoodie. I'm not sure how easy it's going to be to change this once I get in. If it's like Decentraland, you can change it at any time. But if it's not like Decentraland and I get stuck with the shirt, I want to make sure that it's actually something decent. Um, so bikini top is obviously the choice that we go with. No, no, no. We're going to go with the skull t-shirt. Um, for pants... It looks like we've got some shorts. We've got some ripped up jeans. I think that's the punk look that we're going for. But let's just see what else we've got. Mail delivery pants. I have no idea what that is. Firefighter pants. I mean, at this point, what sort of NFTs are you going to get to decorate yourself? They've got everything. You can be a firefighter, a Halloween hoodie, anything you really want to do. Let's put on some sneakers. Looks like there's not too much there. Adidas actually just released a set of shoes for the sandbox. Unfortunately, I'm not rich enough to be able to afford any of that stuff. But we've got a pretty cool looking character here. He's got some red kicks, got those nice black pants, a little bit of rip, that skull t-shirt. And even though he does look like some sort of dude who's about to go into retirement, he's got a green mohawk. So that's sort of cool. Uh, so that's our character. Let's save the changes. And our avatar has been saved. So now that we've got our avatar, let's, uh, let's just jump into a world. So I think Alpha Hub, that's probably the first world we want to jump into. We only have access to three worlds right now. So we're just going to 
go into all of those. And we've got to download and install first the client. So we're going to go ahead and hit play. We're going to download that client and then I'm going to get back. And just like that, where you are in the game. So you can see there's a ton of people running around the game right now. Uh, they're pushing the alpha pass. I'm not going to be getting one of those because I just don't have enough money. But let's just see what this is all about. So this is the welcome area here. You can see Serial Overdrive joined the LAN channel. So we got the LAN channel there that we can talk in. And honestly, I really like this. Um, this feels... It feels a lot like Minecraft. Um, like a lot of this does remind me of Minecraft with NFTs, which is really awesome. I love the fact that people are displaying their art here. I've actually, a few people have sent me some artwork um, onto my wallets. So if I ever was able to get some land and sand, maybe, maybe, maybe that's what I do. Uh, we got some moving little images here. This, this is actually really cool. I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty big fan of this. Um, what is this? What is this guy? Let's talk to him. Welcome. To this Is this your first visit to the medicine? There's, if so, can I share some tips? Jumping inventory. What's inventory? Press I. All right. Yeah, these, these, are, these are pretty easy. So jump is space. I is going to be inventory. Don't know why I'm not seeing my inventory. N is NFTs. So I guess that's probably more like inventory. Oh, no. This is how you buy it. So if you wanted to buy NFTs, this is how you do it. So you can see these different ratings, legendary, epic, rare, and common, and that's going to affect the price of them. They also have some stats too to them. I'm not exactly sure how the stats work, but I think it works for characters. And you can see here, like there is a myriad amount of things that have teamed up with it. So you've got the walking dead. This is really cool. You got Rick over here. Ever wanted to live in the moment in a state of adrenaline rush, knowing that every decision can mean life or death for everyone you care about. That's my welcome to earth the world of the walking dead you want a piece of it we'll come back soon this is just the beginning so here you can go in you can take part in the walking dead themed metaverse that's pretty cool of course you got snoop jog a little bit of ganja there i can tell you what state i'm gonna have to be in if i'm playing this one um get some atari can we can we actually play this this is part of the atari home to the legendary so so atari is actually pretty big in both decentraland and the sandbox so the this company is actually one to follow when it comes to the sandbox and everything like that. I really like actually the fidelity of the graphics and everything like that. It has a bit of a Minecraft feel to it. Okay, I was wondering if I could actually go down in the pool and I can. Can we play this? So it has like, it, it has the right feel to it, honestly. Like this, this gives me some hope for the game. The one thing I will say is it's going to really depend on the price point and what it costs to actually play the game. So I don't know what this is. Care Bears? What is this? Fast Funshine Bear. The Care Bear Hub. You can cuddle with your favorite Care Bear. Okay, so this is Care Bears. I like that. Actually, I don't know anything about Care Bears, so I'm lying. Um, so you got a club right here. So this is... Ooh, so we can travel to it. Release date Thursday, December 7th. Open to everyone. Okay, so we could go to that portal. We might actually do that. What is this one here? Can we just go... Can we go to this? Oh, can so it looks like you can just go to these portals and that's how you travel to places. So there's two that we've got access to, obviously. So we got Smurfs. That's pretty cool. What is this? Deadmau? I like that. Dead Mouse. I think that's what I'm supposed to say. I always forget. So Dead Mouse, I think, is in Decentraland too. So he's he's another one of those icons that you probably want to follow. Which one what is this? Dumb Dumb YZ. Test your strength. Okay. So we can go to that one too. All right, so those are three that are open to us. And then you've also got just this generic sort of NFT gallery. So that's sort of cool. You can just see various uh, ducks and photos and things like that have been displayed. So if you know Decentraland, one of the big sort of points that I think Decentraland misses on is it's become more of an NFT gallery than anything else. Whereas the sandbox has a bit more of a... Uh, has a bit more of a base in my opinion right like there's a game behind it there's stats there's things like that and how those play out how those are affected how free to play or pay to win this game is is really gonna matter when it comes to this game's success so you can see right here they got a board ape those things cost uh, a lot those things are ridiculous i don't know if they're gonna hold their value but you never know so you got a bunch of just nfts of course they've got to have that board ape there so i guess this would be the one that the sandbox owns I'm assuming. Yeah. Owned by the Sandbox game. Yeah, of course they own it. 
don't know if they have a crypto punk or anything like that but you can see this is sort of cool and i do like the way it works where you've got this you click on this and it links right to open seas so that's sort of cool that you can see you can see exactly who owns these different nfts and everything like that um yeah it's a, it's a rather cool idea to be honest okay so you can sprint in this so here you've got your alpha pass so i guess this is going to be owned by ours so they're displaying their alpha pass heroes you've got factions so this is was a scientist faction so again you've got another scene set up here that you can run around and sort of explore okay so this is sort of all about just the scientist faction who it's led by so it looks like in this game you're going to be able to join factions and everything like that the only thing that i'm wondering about here is how factions are going to interact with land areas because if you own a land you can create whatever you want right so if you're a scientist how's that story going to play out over some land owned by you know i don't know like Bayes banks or keemstar two people who are apparently big on nfts right like if they own a land how are they going to interact with the scientist guild or is there going to be some sort of incentive for them to do it is it going to fall apart is there going to be some sort of cohesive story that's i think the thing that's going to be the most interesting right like do these people what is this stroll through central town so let's see if i can just travel to this okay so i can't because i'm missing the alpha pass so i can't visit any of this stuff unfortunately but it's gonna be really interesting to see just how that works uh because i i like i like what i see honestly that was one of the things that interested me most about the sandbox so i looked into it the graphic style it sort of it made sense to me it was a bit like minecraft and it was something that i was familiar with and it, ha it had the right feel to it in my opinion um I think this does. Like this, this is cool. I, I, I like it. I like it. Um, you know, it's not perfect, but so far it's, it's running pretty smoothly. Ooh, let me travel to this one now. All right. So I, I don't have the alpha pass. So I can't really visit a ton of this stuff. There's going to be someone that makes a video with alpha passes with an alpha pass, I'm sure. So go, go. So if you've made a video with an alpha pass, please, please, please post down below uh, so that people can actually see like some of the more advanced parts of this game, because it seems like I just don't have access to it. Um, and the alpha pass, it does feel a bit, I don't know. It's a little bit weird that they're selling access to the alpha like that. That's not something that I've seen before. If you if you buy an alpha pass, you're getting a thousand sand, which is basically five thousand dollars now, along with a bunch of NFTs and things like that. So the alpha passes are actually selling for like thousands of dollars because you get five thousand dollars just for buying an alpha pass and completing all the levels and everything like that. And it, it, it's it's a bit weird to me that they're selling an alpha access like that. I'd think that they'd want to just I don't know, give it out to people, try to make it a little bit more promotional than something you've got to buy but you know to each their own that's what they decided to do that's completely up to them that's their prerogative if they want to sell it they can sell it you know it is what it is but i, I would have liked to see the alpha pass being given out in a little bit of a different way um it looks like what do you do you jump down here and you're fighting skeletons is that the idea behind it it does feel like a massive world it feels like there's a lot to explore but um it doesn't feel like there's a lot to do yet and maybe it's because I don't have the alpha pass. That could be it. Like the scenes that they've set up are really cool. And I can see like the merits behind it. Like I could see them putting in dungeons and you come in here with your NFT sword and you can bite off skeletons to try and get a better reward or a better sword or something like that. Um, I think one thing that's going to be big is depending on how they handle transactions and things like that. Um, Cause if it costs way too much to make a transaction, I can't see people playing this. Um, yeah, I see someone already commented. Hi, what do you do here? I can't understand. So yeah, it's it seems like this is mostly just exploring and seeing the different worlds that could exist. Um, and th this was obviously made by a game developer or something like that. So let's see if we can do... Can we do an, a map? Options. There we go, map. So let's go to the map. Oh, I've got to open my browser. All right, so what we're going to do is we're just going to run around. So it turns out that to get a map open, you need to open your browser. I don't know why they would have gone with that design decision. That one's uh, not a good design decision, in my opinion, because it, well, A, it doesn't work for recording, but one of the things you don't want to do as a developer, game developer, any sort of developer, 
is pull people out of your world to another world. And when you open a browser, that is sort of what you're doing, in my opinion. So I'm, I'm going to be harsh about this one and say that that was probably a bad design decision, in my opinion, in my opinion. I'm not a game developer, for those of you who are wondering, but I do know a bit about game development and that it feels weird. That feels like a weird thing. Hopefully it's just because it's an alpha and the map is going to be coming along and going to be coming to this client. But I will say credit to them because they actually made it a client. That was something. Oh, there we go. It's got some music here. I think you can do dances too, right? Let's talk to this robot. He's probably going to tell me how that works. Press T to select your move. All right, let's do some dancing here. Yeah. All right, there we go, right? Dance along to the music. Getting myself a little bit of a copyright problem here, obviously. Let's dance. There we go, pumping it up, pumping it up. Got that fist pump going. Just as good as a club. Take some LSD, take some acid. You won't even get arrested when you take your pants off. It's better than a real club. Just joking, just joking. The only clubs I go to are cool with that. Take your pants off, that just means it's a better party, obviously. I mean, if you don't take your pants off, what sort of party are you going to, right? A lame one, obviously. All right, so now we're going We're going to the club. <laughs> so let's see if they'll let me take my pants off here. Because that's, that's obviously what the club's all about. So I'm telling you, kids, that's, that's, what, that's what I'm going to show you in the movies. If, if you're not old enough to go to the clubs. It's not about drinking. It's not about drugs. It's about taking your pants off. And then dancing on stage. And people throw money at you. And it, it's, it's it's a really cool thing. Alright. So let's load in and let's get that copyright strike here. I'm, hope, I'm hoping that none of this music is copyrighted. But th this might be very... Alright. Um, so it looks like we're stuck on the load screen maybe. But it looks cool. We've got dead mouse, dead mouse here. We've got dragons. Some trippy lights. I don't know. There's some like LMFAO characters all throughout. Looks cool. But I cannot get into it. So we're, we're going to sit here for a little bit just to see. It, it could have frozen. Um, it's, it's an alpha still though, so that's acceptable. If it froze, it froze, no big deal, we're just gonna restart. And we're back in the sandbox, so that was a bit of a break there. For the record, just for anyone that's wondering what happened, there was a bit of a crash. It took me a while to get out of it, like I had to make sure that the audio was saved, the video was saved, just due to the recording process, it took a little bit. By the time I got done with that, I had to go do something else, and now we're back about a day later, still going into the sandbox, and we're still gonna be jumping into the club, seeing what's up, seeing what we can do. So, uh, I think this is where I went, right? Let's try it again. There we go. It's loading. So let's see if we can actually load into this destination this time. And then we'll get to see how cool it is. Hopefully. So yeah, if we have, if we have another problem loading into this... Okay, there we go. So it looks like we're good. Let's test this out. Let's see. So yeah, it was just a little bit of time. But for those of you who are wondering, as long as we got the time, let's just go over the recording process for me. So I use Audacity to record the microphone by voice. And then I use a just... The generic Microsoft recorder to actually record gameplay. Um, so yeah, the Microsoft recorder was fine, but it wasn't letting me get to Audacity, and I'm sort of worried that things would backfire. So there we go. We're in the club. Nice music. I like the music. I'm not 100% sure I'm going to be able to play it for you. It depends on the copyrights and everything like that. I don't want to get struck, um, but... This, this looks pretty cool. It's a very futuristic feeling club. You got some aliens dancing here. A lot of actual like moving objects and it's running fairly well for me. So this is cool. I like this. I like this. I like the music. Speak. Alpha Quest. Welcome to the club, Trevor. While well, you're down here, dance. There are some notable places I'd like you to find to earn a quest. All right, let's, let's, let's go for it, right? Four locations. A stage. The club, the control point, and the dock. So I'll do it. So let's just find it. All right. So the stage is going to be right over here. So we're getting a little bit of lag here, but that's okay. Now, 
how do I, what do I have to do to, should have probably read the directions. Do I need to dance? You need to dance, don't. All right. Dead Mal. You don't know what you're doing here. Let's serial take over. The myth, the man, the legend. How do I dance again? You can tell it's been a while. I'm a. This is more of like that underground club. Who's DJing here? Still dead now. Okay. So I like this. You can see they've got some like board ape avatars that you can load into this. So if you want to show off, you can do that. So that's sort of cool. I mean, I can see how there'd be a lot of people with NFTs that would love this because you can come here, sort of show off your NFTs and all that. Um, let's see. Can you sit in these chairs? No. What does this say? Let's read this. One of a kind dance floor with multiple designs and settings. It says one of a kind, but the fact that I've seen a few of these is, yeah. Interesting. Okay, all right. So what happens if we go up here? That's how you get on the stage. Oh, look at that. I mean, I like it. It's very cool. Don't get me wrong. Oh, see, all right. So the quest, the quest areas are marked. So we can just do this real quick, I think. The stage. So boom, visited the stage. Where's the other one? There we go. Let's head down there. So you got another NFT showcase here. Oh no, we were just here, weren't we? All right, well, let's hit this. What is this? The club, all right, so we got the club. What else do we have? I mean, this is sort of cool. They've got like a little bit of a labyrinth here. I do like it. It's not a control panel. What can you actually do with the control panel? Curious, let's read this. This device is believed to be a supercomputer, but what it controls exactly isn't known. Some say it's building. It's a building or region somewhere, and others say it can be used to access the metaverse. So a cool little bit of like, trivia behind this so obviously this is like an nft object but it'll be interesting to see what they actually do with it right because it's like does this all contribute to a cohesive story or is this just like a one-off type of items and there we go we got the duck so i think at this point we completed the alpha quest you found the duck and i don't know if there's anything we can do now um with that but let's let's uh let's get out of here let's see what we can what else we can do okay so this is gonna take me to the browser so i don't want to do that so we're gonna look at that we got that roll going on there so for those of you who are wondering too there is gonna be like an fps element to this game uh obviously in the club it's really not the place to be pulling out your long sword and beating people up or may maybe it is maybe it is but this club does not seem to be pro uh violence so let's, uh, let's head back up and let's get out of here. One thing that I found very interesting that's very different from Decentraland is there's not really a... Um... So it is a little laggy here. There's, but there's not really a way to uh, see other lands. It doesn't seem like I can walk from like this land area to another land area. Um, so it seems like each one is like exclusive, right? Like if I run over here, there doesn't seem to be any. It could be because it's alpha and there's only a few locations you can go to. But it, it, it's interesting. It's a little telling in my opinion. Because it's like, if they really wanted a good alpha, they should have at least put some stuff in land areas next to some of these areas. So you could just see that you could in other worlds, like, you know, once it's out of alpha travel next door. Because that's one of the things that really could screw a lot of people over. They're paying like 300k or whatever it is to live next to Snoop Dogg. Hey, Snoop Dogg doesn't actually live there. It's not the same as if you're like next door to him and he's going to pass a blunt over the fence, right? Like, you know, it's a virtual world. If he passes you a blunt, you're not going to get high in real life. Maybe your avatar will, but that's not really going to give you that same sort of brain fog. Unless we've got some crazy tech that I don't know about. Maybe we do. If it if trillion dollar company right there, if they can they can get you fucked up over the of the wires. But um no, like it's cool, but I don't think it should be 
valued like you're living next to snoop dog because is he actually going to be there are you actually going to be talking to him and I, you know like we'll see we'll see i've got my doubts about that though let's see if we can travel here this is open to everyone so poor oh no i i don't want i don't want to go back to the club we're done with the club um what is this this is open to everyone portal to the nft institute so let's check this out so this is the NFT Institute that we're going to be going into. Obviously, it's going to be an NFT museum. If you're familiar with Decentraland, you know there's pretty much a whole world in Decentraland based around NFT collections and an NFT museum. And while I do think that it's nice to have a virtual land plot that you can show off your NFTs, I have a hard time believing that a lot of people are going to be putting 15, 16, 20, whatever, thousand dollars into showing off NFTs when... You know, do would people put that much into a room that shows off art in their house? I know some people that have stuff like that, but it it's not the norm. I can tell you that much. So let's talk to this guy. NFT. Would you like to? All right. So let's let's do this quest. Why not? Three points of interest: the main hall, the atrium, and the main hall basement. So I'll do it. So it gives us something to do. So let's go through this quest. So we're just gonna head in here. So you can see these are some. Um, what are these? Ape dogs or something like that what are they actually board ape kennel club there we go so these are board ape derivative project what do we have here we got a cool cat what else sup ducks uh i don't i don't know exactly what these are it'd be sort of cool if they could actually tell you oh they do all right daily dust the mission is search and rescue so this is like some sort of storyline type thing is it all right so they have a lot of like avatars populated throughout, but a lot of these, only the ones with names are actually real people. So I believe these are just sort of fillers to make the area feel a little bit more uh, interesting, which fair enough. We got a little statue in here. So yeah, sub ducks, you got those right here. This looks like some bored ape artwork. Nothing out there. Let's keep going around. So hopefully they're not going to strike me down for some sort of copyright because I'm showing off. This is what women, this is some sort of like woman. Um, uh, I, isn't it? I, I don't know exactly what this is. I know it's like a women, not women in tech, but it's like a, a feminist NFT type thing. Which, you know, fair enough. Hey, if that's your thing, that's your thing. I'm not against feminists or anything. Don't get me wrong. It's just not, you know, I tend not to buy artwork based on the gender or race or anything like that of who made it i buy it based on how it looks so this is sort of cool you got some robots i forget what they're called but robots um i am not familiar with this one you got some wicked craniums some what are those gutter rats we got banana vending machine it doesn't look like i can get bananas from it though which is disappointing a little bit of sandbox graffiti that's cool so let's actually go and find these little things but it, it's honestly like i do love this aspect of showing off nfts like this and it would be something that i would i would love to do for myself it's just i couldn't see myself paying fifteen thousand dollars to do it right um you know if i'm getting into nfts a sandbox plot cost a couple hundred dollars you guys know in entropia i i, I threw i threw down a hundred bucks to get a place that i could show off my items and everything like that or uh, some of you know, some of you don't, but now, now everybody knows. 100 bucks, right? 100 real, real world dollars to be able to show off my stuff there. Gladly do it in any sort of virtual world. The thing is, 15k or whatever it is, whatever, whatever the land plot is, that's not something I'm going to be doing. But maybe, you know, maybe that just means it's not for me. Maybe it means I'm not spending enough. You know, obviously I know what a lot of these things are, but I'm not a huge like NFT investor or anything like that. Maybe one day. If any of you are NFT artists and you want to, Send me something out of the goodness of your heart. I'm always happy to accept it. We got a board ape down there. If any of you are board apes and you want to send me one of those, that'd be sick. It's only like two hundred thousand dollars. You'd be sending to the channel. I mean, it would definitely be appreciated. And I actually probably wouldn't sell it. I've been looking into it. Like board apes are one of those things. Like I don't see the reason they cost so much, but because they cost so much, I find them cool. I'm gonna admit it. Like a lot of people don't want to admit that they don't want to admit that they're in it because it costs money and it's expensive and sort of cool looking, but it looks cool. It's, it's like wearing a Gucci watch or it's like driving a Mercedes or Lambo or Ferrari. 
I know Mercedes is a little bit lower end if you're talking Lambos and Ferraris, but it's like one of those cars, one of those things that you can show off. It's the same with the Bored Ape. If you're living in the virtual world, having a Bored Ape avatar, having a Bored Ape, being able to put that as your profile, that's like your flex. I'm not a big flexer, to be honest. Like, to be, like, all right, this is gonna, um, I can't say that without flexing. I can't, like, but if I wanted to, I could buy, like, a Gucci shirt and wear it and... It, you know, my, my bank account would notice, but it wouldn't be something that's like catastrophic to it. But it's just not something I do because I don't know. It just it would just feel weird. Like anytime I have something expensive, I feel weird about showing it off. It's like if I had a board ape, I'd never, I'd probably never use it because I'd feel weird about it because it's like showing people, like you know, it's like walking around with your bank account tattooed on you or something like that. Every time it goes up and down a dollar, it's gonna be oh, okay. Let's not do that. <laughs> Every time he goes up and down a dollar, it's a little painful because you got to get that tattoo changed and people are like, what are you doing, dude? Maybe not quite the same, but you know what I'm getting. So here's another board ape. He's smoking a cigarette, but I, I like to think that's a joint in disguise. And and they're, they're all definitely doing some LSD. So obviously the sandbox has a lot of board apes, which uh, is ironic because I think they might have a lot of board players too. This is all you get to do. Um... I, I, I like that joke. I liked it. A lot of people are not going to appreciate that one, but I, I, I thought it was I thought it was a little funny. All right, so let's 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 keep going. Let's go on to the next challenge. We've obviously gotten one more challenge done. We've seen the NFT museum. Let's see if there's actually like an FPS or any sort of combat that's going to be going on because I think the combat that's going to be what sets Sandbox apart from Decentraland, and whether or not they can do it, like. This rolling mechanism, if, if, if you have Unity Engine, if you build something in Unity, like anyone can sort of do this. And you can see it does get clunky here, right? Like that's not quite how rolling should work. Let's try rolling down the stairs. So let's try this again. Let's try this again. So you can go downstairs, but you can't go up the stairs when you're rolling. So that it could work. It could work, honestly. But what I really do want to see is the combat because I think that's because that is one of the things that's going to decide if this is something that everybody's going to want to play or something that people are going to visit as some sort of like museum. Cause I think there's two sort of metaverses, two sort of like cryptocurrency worlds that you're going to have. You're going to have the museums where people can go and display their collections. They can show off. They can be like, Oh, this is cool. And then you're going to have the actual world where people can go and there's a lot of useful stuff. Right? So like, let, let's take, a big company like Nike or something like that. And you're like, oh, it's so cool. They've got an office in the metaverse. Like they could do that anywhere. And there's no real reason that they wouldn't want to do it on their own servers at some point, right? Like if, if Sandbox gets big and all these big corporations are setting up offices in the Sandbox, what's to stop me or someone else to come along and just design basically the same thing, but outside of the Sandbox and say, hey, Sandbox, it costs, you know, let's say it's 100K to buy a land plot and you can have all your people meet there. Or we can just import their avatars because these are NFTs for use, right? Um, and that's how it should be. You can import their avatars and have them show up in some sort of similar virtual world that doesn't cost you a shit ton of money to, you know, have a plot in. So, okay, so this is a dungeon. So this is going to be interesting. But my point here is it's really going to depend how this works. If they have some sort of mechanics that can be used, if you can show up with the sword and actually use it to fight things off and everything like that, then it becomes more of a living, breathing metaverse. You're going to come here to play your games, and maybe you hang around just to chat with people too. And then you can get that more like natural growth. It's the difference between a city that just pops up, and you know, it's a little bit awkward, it's a little bit weird, but it has a nice feeling to it, and something that's just, you know, created. It just doesn't feel right. So let's speak to him. New challenge. Let's do it. All right, let's accept this challenge. So we got a sword. So, so let's try the combat out. I really want to try this out. And then I actually do have to... Okay, so let's pick this up, I think. There we go. We got the basic sword. All right, let's do it. So we're going down into the dungeon. And we visited that point. Let's try like attacking a little bit. 
so there is a little bit of combat. This is more like hack and slash type of thing, right? Like you just click, sort of works. There's nothing crazy about it, but getting some gray wolves, beating them down. So you can see there is some sort of utility there. There is some sort of combat system. So someone could create some dungeons and do some really cool stuff around it. Um, this dungeon itself is just very easy, very basic. I don't really even see the sword. I probably don't. Do I not have it equipped? Is that what's going on here? Oh, there we go. So now we've got the sword equipped. So that, that looks cool, but I think that's it. <laughs> um, See, so yeah, the one thing I'll say for... Oh, can we? No. So I'm not really doing much more damage with the sword, which is a little weird. And there's I can't go into the den. So that's pretty much it. You can come down here, kill some wolves. As you can see, the interesting thing here was I got this inventory. And you can see, like, when you go in here, you got equipment. You got quest items. And this seems to be outside of the sandbox. So I don't think this sword's an NFT that ends up in my wallet. So that's interesting because what that means is, like, you don't necessarily need to buy an NFT to play the games. They can just give you the stuff you need to do it. Um, so, I, you know, that that's cool, I think. Um, and that's that's a good sign because if they made everything NFT-based, it would be very hard to get people into it. This where you can come in here with no NFTs, pick up a sword, and it's not quite this. It, you don't you don't have to pay for it. I, th I think there's some utility there. Um, the question is going to be, where they go from here because you can see this is a very oh there we go it's a very like very basic demo you can just run through some puzzles and everything like that but i just don't see it being so yeah okay so yeah some very basic stuff but nothing crazy um Oops, so I died. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's not bad. It's very basic combat. This isn't anything that I'm going to say is like ground breaking or mind blowing, but it, it's a really nice start, honestly. And this has a lot more to it than any other metaverse world that I've seen. So uh, to sum it up, it's a cool idea. I love the fact that they've actually got some utility in it, some like gameplay. That's something that a lot of these sort of NFT worlds are missing. They showed off the museum. I like that you, you've got that NFT museum. You can show off your NFTs if that's what you want to do. I love the fact that you can create games like this. And from what I've heard, they're pretty easy to create. And I also love the fact that they've got that club, that demo. And you can see there's a lot of people in one space. They can all coexist. And there's, no, there's not that much lag. There's not that many problems. So, like, overall, I think what they're trying to say, world works for festivals. It works if you want to just build a house, and it also works if you want to build an amazing game. So I can't wait to see what people are going to come up with for this, because I can see there's a lot of stuff that you can do, and it's really, honestly, I think success at this point is going to be completely dependent on users and what they create. But if people start creating some awesome stuff, this 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 could could be pretty big. Like I could see myself definitely coming back, playing a few worlds, and seeing what's up with it. Um, but yeah, for now, I'm just going to leave it there. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure you hit subscribe because I don't do a ton of cryptocurrency stuff all that often. But when I do, they're pretty long videos and a lot of people seem to like it. And hopefully you do too. Anyways, thank you for watching. And until next time, peace.